Welcome to uh, the Press Box. We're live from the Kampala Serena Hotel. Thank you very much for joining us. Yet another week where we discuss some of the biggest sporting headlines on the show tonight. We are discussing the letters from the English Premier League and when the European leagues do intend to come back. And that, of course, includes the Bundesliga, which gets back next week on f this week on Friday. I shall also be giving you details about all the other leagues in Europe because the government in the UK has finally released a statement. We shall tell you a thing or two about that. We also come back locally and discuss one of the biggest topics in Ugandan sport. We are discussing something to do with your own entertainment. How many of these folks that are celebrities in the sports discipline have you watched in the different stadia? We shall be asking you a question about that. And of course, we are getting very interactive on the show tonight as well. Just to let you in on what will be happening tonight, I've got uh, the uh, Corporate Affairs Manager at the National Council of Sports, Mr. Ismail Dakaba Chigongo. He'll be telling us so many things about his own past and his own uh, uh, celebrities, folks he's loved in the sporting industry. And of course, the reaction from the National Council of Sports to COVID-19. But more importantly, we are huge, I'm telling you, huge online tonight. And Joel Kamadi is standing by. Joel, what's happening? I'll tell you what, Andrew, I love this topic for one reason and one reason only. It gives people a sense of nostalgia. Never, never on the show have we ever had so, so many comments by 12, midday today. People were commenting, remembering what great sports personalities they've seen live and when that <coughs> was. And that's what we're really asking today. Who which Ugandan uh, sports personality have you spotted live in the stadium, on the track and field, and when was that? Do let us know, and I'll be sampling some of those comments here on Twitter. Just to run but a few before I head back to you, Andrew, um, people already commented, and we'll have Ham Parker already, who said, wow, thanks for the show. I must, I, I must say I watched Masindia Onyango Lumala Abdu uh, in Abu Dhabi last year against Ivory Coast. What a heated game that was at the Sheikh Zayed Stadium. Sir Fabian Pavel said, uh, I have to settle for Philip Okorach and Jimmy Inabu. What they've done for their respective sports, both on the local and international scenes over the years, is something else. Maybe one more. Uh, this is Nathan Nasa, who says, obviously, King David Obua and Augustine Tsumba, but I also respect John Akibua's name uh, as much as I wasn't born by that time. I have one that I saw, and people wanted to know which your favorite sports personality that you've watched live is, Andrew Gabriel. <coughs> Ah, well, there you go. I'll tell you about that very shortly. But at, I'm also interested and really happy someone says Augustin Sumba. I did watch Augustin Sumba uh, playing in Uganda, in the Uganda Premier League. And trust me, one of the special talents I've watched with my own eyes. Later on in the show, I'll tell you my own. I I'm really struggling. Trust me, I'm really struggling. I have about 50 to 60 names of folks I've watched play in Ugandan colors. And I'm struggling to pick out my favorite two. But who are your favorite two? The hashtag is NTV Pressbox. First, the headlines. No professional sport, even behind closed doors, will be staged in England until 1st June at the earliest, according to the UK government. The government has published a 50-page guidance document detailing how England will begin to ease lockdown measures. Step two of that plan, which will not be allowed to start before 1st June, includes permitting cultural and sporting events to take place behind closed doors for broadcast while avoiding the risk of a large-scale social contact. Thank you very much. A quick look at the headlines going in and around the world. Most of you guys are still waiting for a big update on when the English Premier League will return. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, we do understand uh, uh, the 1st of June is what most of the federations now uh, and the club managers could be looking at if the UK government statement is to be adhered. I think it will be adhered to. Uh, whether the football will have uh, uh, so many fans in the stands, uh, we still have to wait and see what happens. Ismail Dakawa Chigongo, among other issues uh, to discuss tonight, is one of those. Thank you very much for joining us. As always, welcome back to the press box uh thank you andrew uh, it's been long i yeah. don't know whether i can still speak because <laughs> i haven't been on a forum like this yeah. uh for close to two months so kind of missed it but i don't know if i still have a voice for it covid 19 covid 19 i mean let's start with that though one of the bigger headlines uh, from england today is the government suggesting the premier league could be back uh, by the first of june uh, there was a report today that one brighton player has tested positive for covid 19 that throws uh, more fire into what is happening at the moment. They just might cancel the season, or would you suggest they cancel the season? 
It's a very difficult situation that sport and our social lives face at this point in time. This evening, I was watching the UK Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, as he delivered that address in uh, Parliament. Mm. And when he said the early second return is June 1st, I was thinking, uh, how, many, how much time do we have to go to get there? Because I think some of the negotiations that have been going on in the UK include way beyond the Premier League, including the British Grand Prix for Formula One, which I think had almost got an agreement uh, to have it behind closed doors. And I've seen an interview of Lewis Hamilton over the past few days saying it would sound, it would look a bit alien for him to be racing in an empty Silverstone. So it's you not know, something he's experienced. The Premier League, I, I don't know how these guys are going to do it. Yeah. Because... Let's say, because I've seen proposals. Um, I was reading a bit of the BBC, the chief sports reporter, Dan Rowan, wrote an article about what they could do. First of all, scrapping home and away games. Um, then, which would also erode a bit of the revenue. Uh, teams gather in one venue and play. Now, the top six, top six clubs that have a lot of money are saying they are open to the idea, and the bottom 14 are saying no. Yeah. That is one. Two, what if they start playing today and play two, three matches, then someone tests positive. At Arsenal, Liverpool, Man United, or Chelsea, what happens? Do they stop again? Yeah. So it's a bit difficult. I've seen suggestions that if a player tests positive, then it wouldn't be revealed publicly, not mm -hmm. to cause alarm. Because when you talk about the Brighton player, that's the third p person, part of the Brighton setup, who has tested positive for COVID-19 currently. So it's a very, very precarious situation. I don't know. I, I, don't, I actually started getting a feeling that the football won't return. Just, yeah. We are just trying not to admit. And also, while the Premier League will talk about all the things, and when they had their meeting today, all the clubs agreed that they would love the season to resume. That's a good place to start. Yeah. But now, in case the season doesn't resume, because that question was raised to all the clubs, and one of the proposals is to increase the number of teams in the league to 22. And the FA says... The three teams at the bottom of the league have to be relegated <laughs> because the FA have a bigger league to manage, yeah. which is the English Football League, which is the Championship, League One, and League Two. And just imagine a situation if the teams in the bottom tiers of English football don't move up the layers of football in this season. The FA will be in court yeah. for the next three, four, five years. It would be, be a crazy idea. So I'm starting to think that the league will not resume. Mm. The, there's got to be a way they work out. Perhaps everyone agrees in England, give Liverpool their league title then work out other, mod other modalities of Look, the league. At the end of the day, I'm a very big Premier League fan as well, and I want the football to certainly get back so I can watch some of our favorite sides. But uh, I do also believe it's a matter of life and death, and we've got to look out for the health of these superstars. On the show tonight, by the way, we are crossing over to Kenya and talking to a good friend of ours, Chiko Lawi. We are also crossing over to Kigali, Rwanda, to catch up with Arnold Quizera, just to know the impact of COVID-19 to some of uh, the biggest leagues uh, in East and Central Africa. But Dakaba Ismail Chigongo here is the Corporate Affairs uh, Manager at the National Council of Sports, which of course is the organization responsible for all these federations. I should start off by asking though, the impact of COVID-19 on all the federations, at least from a National Council of Sports perspective. It's been enormous. Mm. Uh, when um, events were called off by the president on March 18th, we were in preparations for so many things. Uh, the Uganda Cranes team was going to Cameroon for the Chan. They were supposed to play South Sudan in a double header for the qualifier for 2021 Africa Cup of Nations. Mm were preparing a team for boxing to go to Paris to compete, um, to compete at uh, the Olympic qualifiers. You remember some went to Senegal and only Shari Musa qualified and others were supposed to go to Paris. Uh, there was a netball Africa Cup under 21 that was supposed to be held in Lugogo. That was canceled too. And several other events that we don't manage directly are probably the leagues and all because we mainly deal with the national team. So it's been enormous. Uh, last week I was, uh, I was in office in Lugogo and I noticed one of the things that struck me the most when I walked in there was the overgrown grass. Yes. Uh, because there's no reason to, for the groundsmen to come to work. There's no sport going to be played because we shut down the place uh, as soon as the president announced that sports events will not be happening. So it's been enormous. Mm. And um, financially, um, it, will, it will mean a lot. Of course, when the Minister of Finance do make releases and then all the programs that we submitted that uh, were supposed to be happening in sport are not happening, that has an implication because government accounting procedures may not allow you to divert money without the permission of the Secretary to the Treasury. Mm. So if you submitted a program and it's not going to happen because of COVID, it's going to be very difficult for government to commit money to give this federation whatever the other program they've designed is, yeah. has come up. So 
it's a very, very difficult situation right now. And I mean, the other, day, the other day I was talking to Engineer Moses Magogo and, and seeing what the Federation FUFA had done, for, for example, for the footballers in the country, mm. uh, giving some relief to guys in the top division and the second division, I think. And then we got complaints from guys in the lower divisions. So it's not just those guys. You have rugby, you have cricket, you have hockey, you have uh, all these other sports. Do you understand a situation where these guys don't earn much? They don't have time for side hustles because, for example, football in Uganda might be semi-professional, yeah. but it gets you busy throughout the week. Yeah. Do you understand a situation where some of these sportsmen and sportswomen might not come back to sport? It's, it's very difficult. I've seen some stories, and uh, I'd love to applaud a lot of the people in the media who have kept some of these stories alive. Mm. I've seen some, some sportsmen who have gone out and done other things. Um, I saw one, I think, on Kao this week of a... One of the footballers was doing a bit of farming, and I saw, I think, Savio Kabugo mm. on Football 256 also doing a bit of farming. And there are several others, and maybe so many of the other stories are not being told. But uh, the situation, I think, and you know, sometimes I love not to isolate sport from the other spheres of society, because the struggle that sport is uh, facing today is what is being faced by everyone else. While we walked into the studio, I was telling you about a story about poultry farmers in this country. Yes. And they're having to sell eggs at 7,000 shillings, now 5,000 a tray. It was more than that. It was selling, I think, at 9,500 mm. before uh, this COVID-19. So the situation is bad across the board. I'd love to applaud, first of all, the federations that have supported their respective sports. I've seen rugby and football. They've uh, supported their players. But um, the others maybe may not have the resources. And these are some of, I think, the discussions that as National Council of Sports should be undertaking because uh, this is going to take much longer than what I assumed. I can imagine, uh, Andrew, wherever you want, March 18th, when the president announced this, uh, the preliminary part of uh, the lockdown, lockdown, you must have felt like, ah, but now we even don't know when this will, this will end. We've had 14, we've had 21, we're having another 14, and the indications are not very good that normalcy will return anytime in the near future. So it's a difficult one, and you've got to say that everyone, I think I would, since this is Ramadan and I've been, I'm fasting, yeah. actually this is uh, day number 18, mm. um, maybe I'd love to uh, call upon that Muslim spirit that if you have something, help another person. That's, that's the least we can do, even you if share. you play sport. If yeah. you just share. If you uh, play volleyball yeah. with Nkumba um, and you have something you can share with someone in Nemo Stars, please do. Call them. I'll come back to that shortly because I also want us to discuss what the sports journalists are going through as well. I mean, I was seeing USPA getting some relief. Uh, Mr. Patrick Kanyomozi, I haven't received any, any posho and beans at my location, but we shall be having that discussion very, very shortly. Uh, like I promised, let's quickly cross over to Nairobi, Kenya and Kigali, Rwanda, where we have two good friends of ours. One of those is Chikolawi, there he is on the right of the screen. And of course, Arnold Quizera on the left. Arnold, I must say you're a little dark, so I'll start off with uh, Chikolawi. You probably should improve uh, on your lighting. Lawi, good evening and welcome to the press box, my brother. Uh, thanks, Kabura. A pleasure, man. It's been a minute. Happy to hear from you. Uh, it's, it's been a while. T Tell me, what, what is Kenya going through at the moment? I mean, you live in Nairobi. You have a feel. Uh, you guys have had some numbers. Tense moments these are. Yeah, tense moments, um, <laughs> debatable for some people because some people here don't believe this disease is actually that bad, that maybe it's affecting Europe. That's why there's a whole hula baloo about it. But when you look at African countries, the, 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 the effect is not as bad, fair to say. But then there's the argument that, yeah, look, man, maybe we're not testing as well as European countries because we have limited equipment. Either way, Kenyans are on the edge. Some are not scared. Some want like others realize, yo, this this thing could be just biding its time, and then we'll feel the full impact. So, you know, it's a 50-50 situation in Kenya, to be honest. Uh, I'll cross over to Arnold Quizera very, very shortly. But Lawi, let me, let me ask you one more. I mean, we have so much talk here in Uganda about, for example, the Uganda Premier League and all these other sports disciplines, all these sports stars here in the country. You guys are going through exactly the same. Gormaia are champions. This has caused some chaos in sport and the calendar. Let me ask you quickly before I answer that. What, what discussions are you having in the UPL? Uh, what do you mean discussions am I having? Like, what's the scenario? You guys are just, the, the league has stopped, right? Yes, our league has absolutely stopped. We haven't yet made a, de a, de a decision on who will take uh, the league here because we are trying to hold on to see if our lockdown is lifted early. But you guys have made a decision already. There we go. Thank you. Thinking, like the rest of the world, that why are we in a rush? 
were rushing to make a decision in what, on what basis. When it was France, understandable. The government came out and said strongly, no tournament until a certain date, which didn't look feasible for the league. So they were allowed to remove it. We saw what happened in Belgium in the Dutch league. Same scenario. And, and, and I'm sitting here and thinking, guys, why are we rushing to make so, such a decision? Why are you crowning Gormahia champions when the rest of the world is waiting? And we're not... We played our season, a season or two, two or three seasons ago. We played in six months, an entire season, so we could change the calendar. So why are we in a rush right now? Because of CAF. CAF want a representative in the Champions League. The Champions League is not over. The Confederations Cup is not over. CAF haven't finished. Why in heaven's name has Kenya decided to go down that route? That's the question we can't find an answer to. Well, I think I can, but, you know. <laughs> Lawi, I'm coming back to you very shortly because I want to talk about the post-COVID period like some guys have been saying. Then I want to cross over to Kigali Randa where Arnold Quizera uh, should be standing uh, by for us now. Arnold, uh, the uh, Rwanda Premier League, uh, sport in Rwanda generally, uh, must have stopped definitely. But how big has it been affected and the sportsmen and the sportswomen? Uh, thank you for having me, Andrew. Uh, as always, Lawi, what, uh, what's up, my guy? Uh, now, qu quickly... Uh, the decision, uh, there is no decision in Rwanda, but the Ministry of Sports came out uh, as of late last week and said there won't be any sporting activities in the country until September, uh, the earliest. So what happened was uh, the Basketball League wanted to resume. Now remember the first ever uh, Basketball Africa League was supposed to be held here in Kigali, and that meant a lot of income. Now, the, what happened, uh, I talked to a few uh, colleagues and coaches in the basketball world, and some of the players were on uh, per day contract, play by pay contract. So those are heavily affected. So the income of so many sportsmen, uh, athletes uh, as well. Uh, we had the random mar marathon uh, that our brothers in Kenya always come over and dominate. Uh, that has been moved uh, as well to uh, the earliest in September. But now, football, football, football. Now, only five of the 16 national Premier League teams uh, are paying their players the full salaries. Yeah, uh, of which the rest uh, have said they are not going to be able to pay full salaries, including the defending champions, Rayon Sports. Now, uh, some clubs are sponsored by district officials, and that money has been moved to a COVID relief fund because the government is moving money to uh, the relief fund to help people. So that means players playing for teams, uh, which are about six to seven of the teams in the National Football League that are sponsored by their district, are not able to be paid and they won't be paid so some clubs have already uh, enforced the force majeure and they are going to go ahead uh, to start paying players when the league resumes now currently there are talks of holding the league behind the leagues behind closed doors basketball wanted to come back to town i remember randa has the list of uh, number has uh, the list number of active cases right now among the east african community countries uh, but that uh, the, the government is being very cautious. Even gyms are still closed. Uh, restaurants are almost, you know, no-go areas. Uh, yet they have been uh, reopened until about a few times. So the economic impact has been very, very heavy. And just to put it in, in perspective, as a, uh, an economy, the, uh, the government of Rwanda has lost 800 million US dollars in the past two months alone. Oh, there you go. Uh, I'll come to you very shortly because, uh, Lawi, I want to know about the pay grade, you know, in terms of the amount of salaries given to these footballers or to these athletes in Kenya. Kenya has been mad by financial problems recently. I mean, we saw sponsors withdraw. We saw a few clubs uh, almost get out of existence because of money. Now we are talking about COVID. So they are not even earning from entrance. The, the sponsors are probably not giving them as much money. Will Kenyan football really, really ever stay the same after this? That's a big question. That's actually a very, very good question, uh, question, Kabura. Look, we know that most African leagues, and it's not just Kenya, apart from the likes of South Africa, exceptions like uh, Egypt, you know, those countries that are considered more developed and uh, thrive more economically in terms of sports, it's very, very hard to mention a country where the clubs are paying the players in East Africa, let me go with that, as well as they should be. 
multiply that or add to that the fact that we no longer have sponsors in our league, then we're in big trouble here in Kenya. In fact, players get, what, 15,000 Kenya shillings. That's about $150 a month, some players. Or you can get someone who gets almost close to $2,000, uh, $2, uh, for example. But these are all dependent on gate returns. Gormahia have a big team, big fans. They come out, they play, uh, they pay at the gate. Numbers determine how much income the clubs have. We don't have clubs that are feasibly selling uh, stuff, jerseys or anything. We depend on independence. Gormahia struggling, even with, uh, without COVID, they were struggling. How are they going to pay their players now? I'm looking at teams that had in ability to pay players we almost had walkovers in fact we had some walkovers not to mention we added teams to the league it's crazy right now players are struggling i've spoken to a few who are telling me they're almost done with football because they don't see how it's going to come back who's going to convince large numbers which were non-existent in the first place to come to stadium after corona everyone will still have some concerns the way we see football the way we've known football the way we reported it watched it it's changing change forever uh, that's fantastic. Arnold, I'm coming to you shortly. Uh, Arnold, I'm coming to you shortly, but let me first finish up with Lawi. Lawi, definitely Eliud Kipchoge can stay afloat during this time uh, because of the money he's earned. And some of Kenya's top athletes can stay uh, you know, afloat. But I was just asking, uh, for example, here in Uganda, do you understand that some Kenyan sportsmen and sportswomen might actually quit after COVID-19? And this will have a very, very big say on how Kenya gets successful in the future, which will be sad. But I've, I've, like I mentioned, I've spoken to players, I've spoken to athletes, not just in, in football, in basketball, in netball, in rugby, who are like, yo, fam, I've just realized that I was struggling from the beginning. Even when football was on top, when the sport was on top, I was struggling. Now, there's no income whatsoever, no security whatsoever, and you don't know when something like this will happen or when this will end. So some people have actually seriously considered ignoring, ignoring sports or, you know, the organization usual jobs but don't worry because will still come and boot, uh, beat you when it comes to rugby we'll still have young people coming up well there goes there goes the man who has just seen his team qualify for the africa cup of nations for the first time in so long comparing uh, the Uganda cranes <laughs> who have been there twice. But Lawi, I really appreciate your time, man. Let me quickly cross over, though, to Arnold Quizera. Uh, Quizera, one of the debates here in Uganda is that the Ugandan football clubs, for example, have been here for 50, 60, 100 years, and they have managed to survive throughout so many problems. Are the clubs in Rwanda doing anything for their players during this very sad time, or are the players out to hang? Uh, Rwanda's setting is very uh, social setting, and... Uh, they, uh, the government is very involved in the welfare of its citizens. So uh, the players, just like many other citizens, are receiving handouts from the government. They are receiving food. Uh, they are receiving the food through their clubs and through their bosses. You have communities getting together. Now you have associations, like let's say the basketball associations, uh, which have uh, people at the league of some Mandela or City Oilers in Uganda, right? Uh, so you have pe patrons like that who, who are getting money uh, putting it together and helping the players in those associations. Now, um, I'm, I'm part of a fraternity that the Golf Club Members Association uh, who have decided that they're going to feed all national team golf players, all caddies at the golf clubs uh, in, in Kigali, all those are going to be fed and money has been collected for that. So you have a lot of togetherness coming in the country to help uh, those who are less, less privileged and those who are heavily affected. You have banks pledging uh, in a lot of money towards the COVID-19 relief fund. So it's good news. Um, it's, it's, it's not the best news, but at least something is being done. And we expect most of the sportsmen to go back to active sports when it resumes in September. Okay, before I let both of you guys go, uh, I mean, first of all, you're both uh, Andrew, 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 top Andrew, paid Andrew, journalists, you go, so you guys are fine. Topic, you guys are fine. I don't think COVID-19 yeah, is going to affect it, Andrew, uh, you, you that go, much. I, but let me ask you, Lawi and Arnold, uh, in relation to what is happening in uh, the European football, I mean, there was a statement today that the Premier League could be back on the 1st of June, but at the same time, there's reports that a player at Brighton is actually uh, tested positive. Do you understand the return of these European leagues, or are you human beings who are saying, you know what, it's life and death, cancel the leagues, let everyone get healthy, let's start afresh, or, Lawi, just like you love Arsenal, you want the games back no matter what? 
look, this is a different case for me. This is totally different because it's not Africa. This is Europe. It's uh, these clubs have money. They have uh, stadiums. They have some even have some hotels in the stadium where they can actually sit. And I think they are well equipped to have these players come in quarantine them, watch them, test them consist consistently, including anyone who partakes in the match day, you can constantly test. You can ensure that these players are safe and thriving. Bring back the league. We are going to go crazy. I'm telling you, without sports, I'm realize that we will go crazy. I am almost tired of, of just doing nothing, to be honest with you, apart from online shows, which, Kabura, you're supposed to join my online show, don't forget, and playing <laughs> yes, PlayStation. But it's this is England. England can test these players. You can exclude fans behind closed doors. If there's a player who's tested, yes, a Brighton, fine. Now you know. So quarantine him. But get the other healthy players out there to play. I understand. It's slightly selfish from my part because we're fans. We want entertainment. And from the TV right part because they want money. Um, the teams want money. But we can't live in fear forever. If we can put in measures to keep them safe i'm all for european football returning a hundred percent arnold uh, andrew i'm a liverpool fan so definitely you know what my answer has to be there. like just just the league has to be back at least play three matches give liverpool the trophy uh oh. then we can have some formula one back. golf is going to be back uh, very soon uh tiger woods and phil Mickelson were talking about it the other day but one thing i really wanted to contribute to andrew uh, was your topic earlier uh, of the most successful sportsmen in uganda that we have ever seen now i have a story having gone to school in uganda uh, i have a story the most successful sportsmen i've like the best sportsmen i've seen in uganda uh some of them have not gone to the, at the peak of their heights but uh now we can agree with me this a gentleman called philip Wokorach. i think he's the greatest rugby player uganda has ever had uh, beh just behind Philip is Lubega Felix, who tormented Kenya back in the day uh, when Uganda yeah. went on to win the 2007 uh, Africa Rugby Championship there in Madagascar. But the, the, the one person I'm going to mention that I don't think uh, Andrew thought of is a player called Arnold Coreta. Now, Arnold Coreta was a badminton player. And by the time Arnold Coreta was about 14, 15 years old, Arnold Coreta was beating Edwin Ekiring who a year later went on to become Africa's number one badminton player and uh, winning that silver medal at the All-Africa Games, uh, which were held in Botswana, if, if, if I'm to remember that correctly. And then he went on to play at the Olympics. Uh, he had a career-threatening injury later, but Arnold Coreta at the age of 14, 15, was beating Edwin Ekiring. Now that was talent. That was talent, but it also went to West. So okay. the greatest sportsmen I've seen in Uganda, Philip Okorach, Lubega Felix, Arnold Coreta. Okay, guys, first of all, thank you very much. I really appreciate Chico Lawi, uh, live from uh, Nairobi, Asante Sana, and of course, Arnold uh, in Kigali, Rwanda. Urako Zechani, my friend. I hope I've said thank that right. <laughs> thank you, my man. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, and I really appreciate that as well. I mean, they have already joined in on our own topic. Lawi, Arnold Quizera, who had uh, his school days here in Uganda, has picked his three. Uh, I think we should straight go into that. As you also send us your thoughts at home, who are the best sportsmen and sportswomen in Uganda's history that you have actually watched live? So uh, you don't have to say the whole John Akibo as if you didn't watch them live. You should tell us those two folks, woman or man, that you actually have watched live. It's probably the craziest of questions I could ask you, just like we shall see later. But who is your number one pick? Um, difficult choice, but um, uh, I've got to start with a sport. <laughs> I learned the, the sport <laughs> I learned yeah. first yeah. in my life, and probably all of us Uganda start with football. Mm. Uh, the one I watched, Majid Musisi. I was very lucky as a young boy. I'm now in almost into my mid thirties. Mm. I know I don't mention my <laughs> age actually. <laughs> Last night I was doing a quiz summary and I had to mention my age. I refused. Mm. Um, in 1991, I lived right outside Masaka Recreation Ground. Okay. I watched Majid Musisi train and play every single day of my life. I'd not seen someone captivate people around Masaka town mm. like he did. Of course, eventually, soon after I turned pro, um, one of the best games I think I watched him play was when Villa beat KCC by five goals to one. And he scored four goals in that game, having not scored against KCC for quite some time. So 
Majid Musi. And then eventually he went to Europe, played in France, played in Turkey, then made it back here. Even after he made it back to Villa, while a bit of uh, the pace was gone, yeah. he still had that instinct to score. And you remember the Mu Mu Mu, the triple MU yes. MU attack at Villa at some point had with Mukasa Mubiru and, and then Musisi when he had just come back from Europe. And then, while I had a chance, first of all, to get up close with him, the late Majid Musisi, having been a young boy who always called after training and said, Young and Kaskiro Mpira, Sarah threw the ball and mm. then he used to shoot as hard as he could in the net. Yeah. And that massacre recreation ground a lot of the time. Then, as I grew up and became a journalist, I got a chance to interact with David Oti, the late David Oti, the coach, who is a person who actually first picked Majid Musisi from Mulago, mm. I think to Bell, mm. then to Villa, at the time in the 80s. And the advent and the success of Villa that got him the Champions League final, that um, all the success, and then eventually when he got to Ren and Buzaspo and all these kind of success that he had, was down to the excellence of that single player. Majid Musisi had so many good players around him. People were in claim that was the greatest player. I saw an article that was written by our colleague Andrew Mwangusha, um, in the Saturday morning about how Villa went on to dominate the continent. Yeah. There were so many good players in that team. But the standout of all those players was Majid Musa. And I've actually also learned eventually from Max Ali, who probably watched him more because he's uh, older than I am. And he's, he's actually told me that Majid Musi was a riffraff of a player. He had so many rough edges. But as, as he grew up, he started to pick everything from all those better players around him from Steve Bog Steven Bogere, the passing or the dribbling, from Jackson Mayanja. Yes, yes. If you needed someone who was a better head of the ball than he was, he went and studied, how do you head the ball? If it's Matthias Kawesa, he picks up something from me. And then eventually, he became so complete a striker that he was that lethal and brought so much success. Mm. Um, eventually, the kind of things he did, it's unfortunate he didn't get to the Africa Cup of Nations yeah. because at the time he played for the national team, of course, the wars between... Uh, clubs and FUFA and then the disorganization that he was Uganda cranes at the time, he couldn't get that far mm -hmm. in terms of the Nations Cup. But I was also in the stadium when he scored those goals against Rwanda yes. at Nachivubo, hey. uh, the 5-0 drubbing, and he scored uh, four in that game. So I've got to say one has got to be Majin Musi. But at some point, you'll have to give me a yes, second I'll one. I'll give you a second one. I'm telling you, here on the press box tonight, we are struggling to pick those two. Uh, very shortly, we shall be joining Max Ali and Andrew Mwangusha as well uh, in the comfort of their living rooms, having a cup of tea. I've said that before. It's quite uncomfortable for us here in the studio, but uh, they're enjoying that good time. Uh, so he's gone for Majid Musi. See, the bigger question for you at home should be who is the best sportsman or sportswoman you've watched live? And it does not have to be any sport. Uh, it could be hockey. It could be cricket, it could be basketball, it could be football, um, it, it could be archery, any sport you've watched over the years. Uh, Joel Kamadi has been having more and more of those reactions online, though. I'm told Twitter is buzzing. I'm telling you, it's buzzing, it's on fire. But you haven't asked me about my, 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 <laughs> my one sports personality, or male or female that I've seen, yeah. watched live. Mm. And um, being that I grew up in Nairobi for most of my life, I just happened to watch the 2011 uh, Cranes match against Kenya yeah. at Nambole National Stadium. Sad, sad, sad moment. Sad, sad moment. And, but one player stood out for me, and that was Ibrahim Sekaja. And the reason is, I think in his mind, he knew that that was his last shot at uh, getting a place to the Africa Cup of Nations. They're never going to the, to the Africa Cup of Nations, to be honest. And uh, funny enough, one Patrick Kadu, who used to be at KCCA, was at that match as a spectator that day. And he said that one of this coming you know, years, he was going to feature in the national team. And lo and behold, what happens? He does come and feature for the Uganda Cranes. And so for me, uh, that, was, that was something. That was... It was, it was a bad day for Uganda. Yeah. I felt it. Um, everybody just went back home, crestfallen. And uh, it's, it's oh, something that was you, sticking can my... You, can you just stop reminding us of that day? <laughs> uh, I remember I saw bearded men crying inside Nambole on that very evening. So um, please. Uh, you know, my biggest memory from that day uh, is actually to one I won't mention on air, but yeah. I'll tell you <laughs> when, we get off, when we get off set. Hey. The other one, as we're walking out of Nambole, I used to stay in the neighborhood of Untinda. Mm -hmm. So it was easier to walk through the northern, the northern bypass mm -hmm. and uh, probably get as far as you could, then get a border border and get home. As I walked out, uh, there was a fan who was being interviewed by one of the televisions, like, never nah, yeah. 
nga tukoye bana ine katonda tumukoye <laughs> <laughs> because he had seen Uganda fail so many times yeah. and he couldn't take it it's like ine katonda tumukoye <laughs> well i tell you what uh, joel kamadi i've got a, a, a message here from a very good friend of mine mr philip kiria mm. uh, thank you very much for watching uh, the press box mr modern sogi and he says uh, it's a very easy question uh, if you watched kenneth kamuka that is a cricketer. But what others are saying there? Uh, others are saying so, so much. Uh, Daryl Kisauzi says, undoubtedly, Ibrahim Sekaja, and he continues to represent us, and I believe someday he will coach at an even bigger stage. Lutaya Alan Mark says, one, Stephen Kiprotich's second goal at the IAAF Games in Moscow, uh, that home stretch exhilarating. Two, David Obua's hat trick against Niger at Nambole in the 2008 AFCON uh, qualifiers. The celebrations were unforgettable. Ndiamuhachi Ham, he says, Magic Majid Musisi. This guy was a genius, one of the greatest. He played in Europe at a price very few Ugandan players are yet to beat or can attract. He scored over 80 goals in Europe and over 150 domestic league goals. Magic Majid Musisi again. This is uh, Ndiamuhachi Ham. I think I've read that one. Uh, we have IPV4 who says Ivan Enabu, when he was still playing for UCU Cannons, he was a demon of a player on the court. Then Ibrahim Sekaj's football IQ was second to none. If you're going to have a great team, you need a great center back. Uh, two more maybe. Atukwasize uh, Chris Ogon says Ivan Enabu and Joshua Cheptegei. And uh, one Moses Ruden, a very good friend of ours here, he says, I'll go with the chaps who shone in school. A basketball, uh, basketballer named Ken uh, Balejusa Sula Tenua, that was in Chibuli. Um, uh, the legendary Kenneth Kamuka, of course, he shares that as well. And uh, Simon Golola, who was playing volleyball. Squat all watch, chap was basically a cheat code. That's okay. Moses Rudende. Okay, there you go. So many big names coming in. You can as well join in on the discussion on the press box tonight. The hashtag is NTV Press Box. Now, we do understand from reliable sources that Mr. Uh, Maxali is struggling with technology. <laughs> but uh, we have uh, Mr. Mwangusha on the line uh, joining us as well. Andrew Mwangusha, good evening. And as always, welcome to the press box. Uh, big debate happening here in studio. Uh, what are your two names? Okay, uh, do we have a problem with Andrew Mangusha or is he uh, joining us as well and, and struggling with technology as well? I mean, you can understand though, before I go for that break. Uh, there you go, there they are. Uh, Mr. Maxal is actually fine and uh, he's uh, online as well. Uh, Mangusha is in as well. Guys, first of all, we don't have too much time before we go for at least our first break. Then I can come to you guys uh, probably for a longer spell. But let me start off quickly with uh, Andrew Mangusha. You have had so many names that have been dropped in already. Good evening. And uh, who is your first option? <laughs> Uh, Andrew, good evening. I, I think the listeners uh, and, and viewers need to know first that this has been quite an unfair question to us. And uh, we've been limited to the people who actually watched in flesh. Uh, I, I, have a, <laughs> I have a footballer uh, and a golfer. A golfer, I'm sure Ishmael in the studio can already predict, but let's start with the, with the footballer here. Uh, and, and it's got to do with my namesake. Uh, maybe just a little bit of, of you know, uh, some hints. Uh, I, I absolutely have watched quite a number of, of players currently. You know, David Dobua, Sekaja, and Onyango, due respect to them. But I'll go to the person I watched first in my actually very first home Super League game. Uh, that's in Toro. 1999, I was away uh, early in my levels. So Villa were visiting Toro FC, and Andrew Mukasa was on course to breaking the 32-goal, you know, record by Jimmy, uh, which was set in 1978. And yet, yes, we were we, we were all rooting for Toro FC, of course. But uh, guess what? People came to see Andrew Mukasa, and it, it was almost clear that he was going to break the record, and. Uh, he, he did score in that, in that game, uh, Villa winning 3-0, of course lifting his shirt to show the record broken. But it's the precision with Andrew Mukasa that actually, uh, and the, the calm control of the ball and the temperament, and his, his name, Fimb, of course, coming off the, the straight roads or shots he, he would take that really uh, put him uh, aside from the rest. So uh, in terms of some of our superstars that I've watched live, uh, 
Andrew Mukasa for me uh, he, he is that one and I also I feel I he left us really that is leading the game when he had not reached his potential but in terms of technique finesse uh, in terms of uh, precision and doing what he sets out to do on the pitch he's one guy that I can say I would have loved to even see more of him absolutely uh, I don't know should I end with the second or we can stop on that no I I think let's have one for now. Let me go for a quick commercial break. When I come back from the break, uh, we hope Max Ali will have organized his laptop. <laughs> Max Ali is flipping the laptop oh, on yeah. the left. I don't He's know. Uh, we shall have caught up with Max Ali. But, but at least he can speak upside down. Yes. <laughs> we can take that. And then I'll come back to you, back uh, to Andrew Wagusha. Then we shall take some phone calls and read so many of those messages that are coming through online. You're watching the press box and we're live from the Kampala Sereda Hotel. We're back shortly. Folks, we are live from the Kampala Serena Hotel and Conference Center. Now, earlier on, we did ask you to give us your feedback on who or which sports personalities, two of them to be spe uh, specific, uh, that you've watched live and when that was. I have a few comments on uh, social media here, and we'll start with Luke Moy Dennis, who says, Alan, who was, uh, that's rugby, winning the 2005 car final at Legends for Uganda rugby team, and David Obua at Nambole. Uh, I am Twesi J says there is a guy called Shakes Fimbo of Super Strikers. I'm assuming you're uh, referring to Fimbo Mukasa. There's uh, Robert Kagiri who says Majid Musisi, Fimbo Mukasa for women, focus on Inzikuru and Jin Seninde. Ayokubua, peace, uh, you say. Peace Proskovia definitely changed national ten, uh, the national netball side. I watched her from Mbara SS University Games and national games at home. Number two, you say David Obua made me fall in love with Ugandan football. Nambole, especially Afcon qualifier under uh, coach Laszlo Saba. Call me God's love, you say David Obua in football and Dorcas in Zikuru in athletics peace on you say that's a hard one but i'll go for dennis onyango and joshua chep tegay dennis wakabi will brodokecho norman blake for men and nuba and peace proskovia for women i remember watching one of the uganda cranes training sessions way back in 2000 at kakindu stadium in ginger with coach Okabue from Nigeria. Well, keep them coming in thick and fast. We'll continue to sample some of them. But let me go to um, Innocent uh, Isma Dakabachigongo. I don't know why you and Innocent... Uh, I look innocent. You look innocent. <laughs> <laughs> Isma Dakabachigongo, you gave us your first name uh, as Majid Musisi. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very curious to find out who the second one is. Uh, the second one has got to be Stephen Kiprotich. Oh, okay. At the time when he won that first Olympic medal back in 2012, or 40 years after John Akibua's uh, gold, uh, it was something I think many of us had given up on, um, an Olympic prize of that magnitude. The marathon is run on the final day of the Olympics, on the Sunday, only on the path of beating everything we've ever seen. Yeah. The kind of success, and it's unfortunate the Olympics are not this year yeah. because... I could almost throw everything at it that was going to win gold in Tokyo, uh, like back. I did in yeah. Doha last I'll year. I'll come back to that very shortly. I tell you, uh, the one man who is also watching the press box live from his camp down in South Africa is uh, Mr. Dennis Onyango, captain for the Uganda Cranes. And I've asked him the same question that I'm asking you guys online. Uh, his two answers are Edgar Watson and Ibrahim Sekaja. He says, Naye ne David Oboa. Mm. Now we shall have more of those discussions, but for now let's join uh, one of the guests who's recorded for us something beautiful to give us their own thoughts. I promised you earlier we have so many guests on the show tonight. The first one from Omomuri Gwemizanyo. Here is David Lumansi. Yaliko mutimu ya KCC. Ngo musambi. Mubisewa mulangira Mike Mutegi kati coach. Nga we basamba. Era bava bonna mu club ya Bear FC. Which team are you talking about? Team manager, team of the Bear. Katuwa wa yoni wajia ni wega tap team ya KCC. Era ba samba wambi ni Mike Mutebi. Ko under 19, ne under 23. Era ni wage na more African games. Omwami wewe yapa mu Uganda, ngamazoko sanya kwa under 23, yage na mu USA. Na samba yu professional football, ne inga wano mu Uganda tada. Na na qualifying na suma coaching. Na atende kako kutimo ya under 8, under 10, paka ku under 14, ze kuangeli ya USA. Na atende kako kuchinga ama jie, 
aga USA mupira ogwa leisure oba interdepartment or something wechyo nabatendeka ko nenga bwa yongero kusoma wetuogerira bino aina UEFA coaching license A yimuna Uganda yekagwe manya ina UEFA coaching license A um aina masters mo sports administration um aina masters mo physical training era yensonga lwachi kati ye ye coach oba ye mutendesi wa maji aga US Navy Seals ya gatendeka physical fitness ogwo mulimu gwa gwanga lya USA enna kuzina abera mu Germany eyo era nga yatwali wayo college mu jejimu ku US embassy mutuze kakati US nenga mu na Uganda ye public career kati chimvanzi jayo muntu oyo bwacho nti success ye nsija kumubalira ku cups mekaza ina ku cranes na china chi kubanga ezo cups at the end of the day ya kwesa anga fe aba wagizi fetu zifunamu ni tuwana noli ne tumujira na yenga omuntu obulamu bwe ali bubingo omuntu abalalo basanga baba goba munju chukanga cranes international kati na wewe uzo no international bichi no ingira mu kayumba ko omuntu nagamba ogirabe je midali nze na liboxa ne ku team ye gwanga je midali jo najangi na inga iyo bulamu bulaba bwakona kati nze success yange njagala jitwalira ku muntu akoze ebintu ebyo mu kisawo ba mu ring na jana ayita muna byo na kati nga byakolamu nga osubula no gambo omwana wonti no omwana wange njagala ubere ngoyo so yensonga lwachi nzigeyo patu kabuye kose ya administration yagisoma ne afande aronda nyaka ilima kati mugenzi wamune afande uh, muhozi kainurugaba afande muhozi abubo naba aliba classmates be mu courses za administration and management akati omuntu okubiri gwenjagalo okuteeka ko ye Edgar Watson Edgar Watson ne yali captain wa Villa era captain wa Cranes kati ya CEO wa FIFA Nyumirwa nyo kulaba omuntu yali omusambi wo mupira nga gaziza emirimu jo mupira kubanga abantu abava mupira ebisere bisinga ne mu mizanya emirala bagala kufuka ba coach asifu ntino ebimirimu e, mu bye mizanya bikoma awo naye Edgar Watson wabanga ye CEO nga ne mu club za feza Uganda tetu ina ko muntu ya samba mupira ku top level paka ngaye bwe yasamba na afuka CEO wa club jo bera babiwera tetu ina ye chairman wa club ntoni akuba ko mu cranes kugamba Edgar Watson wabanga atulaga anti ompira gusubulu gaziwa tuleme kuloza anti ava mupira aina kufuka coach ato mulimu gwa coach fena tukumanyi kuli temporary sawo yona bagoba ah tough one but the best two sports personalities i've watched play number one is Charles Yokwe born and bred in Jinja won the Uganda Open golf championship two times winning the last one alongside his father playing alongside his father 2005 and beating a full house of South Africans many of them are uh, we seeing them currently playing on the PGA Tour and the Sunshine Tour in South Africa and on uh, all over the world um, he also played tennis for Uganda Davis Cup player many appearances there captaining the side and then winning the Uganda Open Tennis Championship a couple of times there I'm a bit gender, gender sensitive so number two who will be Peace Boscovia Peace Boscovia whatever she's done for the she cranes taking them to the world cup twice and the lady gazelles the basketball side whatever she's done there as well is well documented the role model of every growing up young female athlete you can't rule her out of this race and uh, number three would like to squeeze in frank a cricket player who has played in the uh, 15,000 kilometers so uh, for me keep rich and judge are the two greatest sportsmen i have watched in the history of the Ghanaian sport Namanya uh, speaking to us. Uh, apologies about that small mix up. That was Doka Sinzikuru speaking to us. We shall get back to her very, very shortly and uh, we shall tell you what uh, the gist of that discussion is as well. So let's quickly go back to uh, a man who is enjoying the comfort of his living room, Mr. Max Sally. He is at home, uh, one of our panelists, to give us his own thoughts on this. Now, Max Sally, I should tell you guys, is not happy. I'm telling you, he's not happy about this debate because he thinks we don't have enough time. He has so many names and he cannot just squeeze two names into this. But, Mark, good evening. Hey, good evening, Andrew. 
I'm very good. You're not a happy man because we don't have too much time yet. We have so many superstars. But let me put you on the spot. Who are the two sportsmen and sportswomen that you think are the best and you've watched <laughs> them live? You see, Andrew, this is why I miss being in the studio. Because <laughs> when I'm out here, I don't get enough time to say what I want to say. And um, I, I'm not sure because I just came on. Did you make it clear to everybody viewing that you're only asking about the people we've seen with our naked eyes, not those we've watched on yes, TV? Yes, yes, I have. Okay, yeah, because that's why, for me, it rules out uh, both uh, Stephen Kiprochich and Joshua Kiptegay. My uh, races that I've got them that matter have all been on TV, and apparently I'm not allowed to pick them because of that. No, yeah. there's no problem. And I mean, also, let's try and go with those you've watched with your own eyes, Mark. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Otherwise, I'd be saying Boza Edwards or, 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 or John the Beast Mugabe <laughs> or even Ayub Kale. But anyway, Majid Mosisi, I understand a few people have already picked Majid. You guys know my, my, uh, my story with Majid. I've got so much to say about him, so perhaps I won't say. I understand that quite a few of other people have picked him. I didn't think that they would, but they have. Have they? Yes, they have, including Dakawa Ismail Chigongo here in studio. Oh, oh Dakawa in the studio is, is going with Majid as well. Okay, uh, so yeah, Majid is, is one. Then I had to cross over. I, um, I had to, to contemplate so many people, and then I went and picked an, an odd choice. Somebody who will perhaps surprise a few people, but uh, one that I thought that I should mention just so he, uh, everybody understands. Uh, and that is uh, Charlie Lubega. Okay, T tell, tell me about that. Now, Charlie Lubega, yeah, is a former rally driver for those who might not know, yeah? He won four national championships in seven years. He actually raced for eight, but the first year, 1996, was uh, just a couple of races when he was starting out. So the full seasons were seven, and he won four championships, 2000, 2001, 2002, and then 2004. He should have won five championships, but the one in the middle, in, in 2003, actually, which was his best rallying year, ironically, it was taken away from him when he won six out of seven rallies that season because the, uh, they said he didn't have a restrictor. Uh, uh, he didn't use a restrictor on his car. But now, Charlie Lubega, the reason I pick him is um, a bit of the same, a similar story to the way I picked Majid, somebody who comes into a sport, dedicates everything that is good to it, um, and then beats people who you think are perhaps more talented, uh, more, more resourced, and more everything. This is a guy who was so meticulous. His preparations uh, are, are the stuff of legend in rallies because he and uh, Abed Musa, his late navigator, were guys who are known to go through a route and comb it and make the best cost knots uh, that, you, you, that could, you could imagine. But having said that, he lived in an era where we had some of the Uganda's greatest rally drivers of all time. And um, I'll tell you, for example, that uh, the people I first watched uh, with, with him and before him, Karim Hilji, Emma Kato, Chipper Adams, um, uh, Charles Mohanji, all these guys. Uh, three of those, Karim Hilji, Emma Kato, and uh, Charles Mohanji, are guys he, oh, he beat when they were driving a pro-drive WRC Subaru. I, I, I don't know if you saw that Subaru, the one that Mohanji eventually called it Daguru. Yeah, he the 1995 all, all WRC. Inc. It's cool. Yeah, he beat all of them in that car when he was driving that his Evo 4, the Mitsubishi Evo 4, which was not a factory prepared car. And then um, he actually won three power of, of Africa rallies in which these guys were involved and also some foreign drivers. I remember one of those actually was the African champion, Scarf Baga, who when he came here was wondering how Charlie was making those times and thought uh, maybe they were cheating for him until he had to drive behind the guy and see how he was actually eating up the course. Charlie Lubega actually has uh, the fastest, um, uh, the, 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 what we call the best, um, the fastest speeds over a, over a section in Ugandan rally history, which is uh, averaging 176 kilometers uh, per hour. He also, um, actually, uh, he he's, when, when he first ventured out, he went to Nairobi, I remember when he was still driving at Salika, and went to the Iketa rally, rally, and he won the super special stage where the, all these special drivers, when Jamuri Park, the first time they drove there, he set the records there, and every Kenyan driver and all the foreigners were saying, who is this guy? From Uganda, Absolutely. we know Emma Kato. Who is this guy who's just come up? And then that Salika broke down. But eventually came back, uh, got into that Mitsubishi Evo 4, and dominated Ugandan rally, rallying the way we've never seen. One of the things, of course, he did 
was to revolutionize the sport into one for which uh, people became leaner and more muscular and fitter and had to work out just to beat the cockpit and uh, concentrate for, for long rallies. Because earlier in his career, he'd been called Tamale because he wasn't finishing, he was overweight and everything. He went, he hit the gym and worked out so hard that all the other rally drivers uh, started following that into, um, um, into getting Absolutely. themselves into the kind of shape which you would expect to say for, for an athlete, a uh, track and field athlete, or a tennis player or a basketball player or, or, or a footballer. And um, actually, ironically, uh, eventually he left rallying because of his back. His back gave way. But he had given okay. everything in that cockpit. He revolutionized rallying in Uganda the same way, say, you say, uh, you remember Tiger Woods and the guys before him? You used to have fat golfers with, with, with pot bellies who used to get tired on the course and shoot uh, um, funny rounds. And then Tiger came in there and made it about fitness and concentration and, and, and will. And Charlie Lubega did quite the same thing in, in rallying here. Okay. So I pick him there uh, ahead of a few other people that I watched live, um, and, which is unfortunate. I've had one or two others there mention that they had a few other picks that I had to drop out. Um, okay, Mark, which I'll come back to very shortly. Since I've not yet caught uh, Joshua and, um, and, and Stephen Kiprotic on the track, but only on TV, was Moses Kipsiro, the guy who, while I was standing at the finish line in... Uh, uh, in uh, Algiers in 2007, the, the All Africa Games actually ran, uh, lost a shoe for, for an entire last lap of his 5,000, and still won gold right in front of me there. It's one of my best sporting moments ever. But I had to knock okay, him Mark, off and uh, a few uh, others. I'll come back to you very of, shortly. Of Charlie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mark, before the show, we agreed that we are going to manage time, but now you're not managing time, my friend. I could show the viewers some of our messages here that we are going to manage time on the show today but you're not managing time on the show hey, okay. <laughs> uh, but i'll come back to you mark very shortly because you have so many <laughs> historical moments in world sport uh, before i come back to dakawa let me quickly cross over to a man who is also a legend in ugandan sport uh, he's one of the best players who ever have played rugby for the and of course a big superstar with the rugby cranes as well here is alan umsoke giving us his thoughts Everything all the way from high school, and everybody can attest those when Namibiango those who played against him while he was still in school, all the way up to club level, and and I think he's done everything. Uh, as a, as an adversary when he was playing for Heathens, of course we had to plan double uh, for him because he was always cross covering and always bring bring the hard hits. He's he's very very solid in everything that he did. The second one is uh, very, very tight knit because there are actually uh, so many greats that, that I could think of. But uh, closest to home, it would be Timothy Mudola because he came out of school and where he was, again, uh, pretty, pretty amazing. He came to Cobbs and he found us there. He played for box. He grew through the system, uh, played for the national team all the time, uh, all through his career. and. As somebody who I used to play very, very well with, I've never seen somebody so determined and uh, somebody put put out so much heart into into all that he did. Of course, Pinnacle must have been that that uh, 20, 2007 final where he was called up to lead a short team in the injury of uh, Adrian Bokenya. And it's unfair that they told me to name two, but one of the people who is going to break and is already making waves is of course uh, Philip Okorach. No one can underplay his achievements, what he's been through, his double leg breaks, his uh, tours to Kenya, and now he's playing in France. I think um, I, you'll ask me for two. I'll name one, Robert Seguya. Two, Timothy Mudo Number three is Philip Okorach. No doubt, no doubt. Ah, Alan Musoke, my friend, we asked for two, but you gave us three. Ah. <laughs> that is how many superstars have been in Uganda at rugby, and that is how complicated it is. Dakawa, you, you love rugby. You follow the game as well. He's just thrown out three names out there, and you can understand where he's getting those from. Yes, I do. Um, I'm only an, I'm only an, it's only unfair that he does not mention him so, mm. because Alan was quite something. For all those who first saw him, uh, there's a story I was told before I watched him. Okay. King's College Buddha, where he was a student, had never won a school's rugby title. Alan Musoke took the first school's rugby title to King's College Budo. Mm. They beat Namiliang and was everything that Budo did in that game. But I think watching, uh, uh, one of the things I agree with him has got to be Robert Seguia. 
um, this guy, besides, besides everything we know, first of all, he was a boxer. Then he converted into rugby and then went and did all these great things that Alan has mentioned. But in there, what Alan does not mention, he mentioned Philip Okorachi's double leg break. I interviewed uh, Robert Sevger when Uganda was celebrating um, 50 years of independence back in 2012. And that story, one of the things that stood out for me, he's uh, dislocated his shoulder and broken an arm. And in all those occasions, uh, Robert Sevger has come back and even played better uh, on all those occasions. So he's been, he's, been quite, he's been quite a player. And his service to the game is something that you cannot understate. It's very difficult to find anyone who has been involved with rugby. And rugby in Uganda was only recognized by um, the International Rugby, God, rug, rugby Board at the time, which is you could call rugby, uh, World Rugby today in the uh, mid-90s. Uh, the story about Robert Seguia, and you, you cannot write yeah. a paragraph about Ugandan rugby for the 25 or so years mm. that we've been part of the international community. If I don't find Robert Seguia in that, yeah. it's rubbish. <laughs> it's Throw rubbish. it away. Here's the thing. Uh, you, you also have two moments you want to tell us about today that have gotten tear, tears in your eyes. But I'm going to come those shortly. Let yeah. me come those shortly. <laughs> you, you, you know, the, the beautiful part about being a good presenter is that you keep the viewers yearning. I'll come back to that very shortly. Two big moments. Uh, though let me quickly cross over once again. We have a host, I'm telling you, a huge list of uh, uh, top sportsmen and sportswomen and journalists speaking us to us th on the press box tonight. So let me quickly cross over now to John Viani in Simbe, another very experienced journalist here in Uganda. Here he is. It's a pleasure to be part of this show. Uh, personally, if I'm to choose my all-time greatest sportsman, I would uh, not look any further than uh, Majidu Musi. I think I watched him when I was very young and uh, the memories he left with me why indelible? I just don't think I can get him out of my head. First player I ever saw dominate uh, that uh, penalty area, scored so many great goals. For many of you who did not have a chance of watching him, um, I think what I would tell you is um, the person that I would compare Majidu Musi to, and this was played in, uh, in, in the recent years, would be Didier Drogba. If you watch Didier Drogba, then I think you have a very good picture of uh, what Majidu Musi was like. He was uh, a monster. And um, playing in Europe, first player I ever saw coming from Uganda playing in Europe, I think that also makes him such a huge um, influence on me as uh, in terms of the greatest uh, sportsmen I've seen. And in, when it comes to sportswomen, I can't look past Doka Senzukuru, first woman from Uganda to win the steeplechase 2,000 meters in Helsinki at the World Championship, the inaugural 3,000 meters, and then she won the Commonwealth Games the following year, again, 3,000 meters. Um, for me, Doka Senzukuru, greatest uh, sports woman that I have watched in, in my time. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, there you go. Thank you very much, uh, John. Uh, uh, of course, and Simi, Yanni, uh, a man who also follows Ugandan football inside out, and has covered almost all these sports, uh, whichever way you look at it. I want us to take a quick break, but I also want to let you know that we are trending number one. I'm telling you, in terms of sport in East and Central Africa, everyone uh, is giving us their side of the story. You should too, as well. The hashtag is NTV Pressbox. I've got a message from a very good uh, friend of mine, a top Kenyan journalist called James Wakabi, and he is saying Stephen Kiprotich and Dennis Onyango. I'm telling you, the names are coming in thick and fast. Quick break. When I come back, I speak to Mark Namanya again. We catch up with Dokas Inzikuru and, of course, have some rewinding thoughts from, uh, of course, Daka by Ismail Chigongo. Then I also catch up with uh, Mwangusha and Mark Sali once again before we pick calls. Hey, it's a busy one. Now. Welcome back. It is uh, the Press Box, and we are live from the Kampala Serena Hotel. Huge topic we are discussing tonight on the show. Your best sportsman or sportswoman, that is Ugandan, that you actually have watched live in action, and so many names are coming in. And so many guys are asking who my favorite are. I'll give you one for now. I don't remember the year, to be honest, but I remember one of my first few games I watched in the Mandela National Stadium yeah. was the Uganda Cranes beating the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Nwanko Kanu was part of that team, yeah. and I think we beat them 2-1. It was my first time to watch Ibrahim Sekaja play for the Uganda Cranes. You talk about a leader. You talk about a calm defender. Yeah. It was Ibrahim Sekaja. He actually did score in that game. Mm. Uh, I think one of the penalties there. 
uh, won by Geoffrey Massa. Yes, um, there are two penalties in there. I do remember yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, so for me, Ibrahim Sekaja is certainly one of those I, I would pick. But Dakaba, before I go to uh, more reactions, because I want us to speak to Max Ali once again and also speak to Andrew Mwangusha once again, speak to Mark Namanya and Nzikuru before uh, we can pick some phone calls. That's how busy the show is tonight. You have two moments in Ugandan sport that yeah. you say have brought tears to your eyes. Uh, uh, I first of all want to make a minor correction. When mm. I mentioned Majid Musi and mentioned Mulago to Bell, actually it was Mulago to Pepsi, yes. then Villa. He yes. went to Pepsi yes. first. Mm. No, never Bell. Um, two moments. One, I watched, I was in the stadium. Ugandan teams struggle to qualify for events. I remember sitting in Lugogo the day the Silverbacks, a national basketball team, qualified for the Afro basket. In 2014, they qualified for the first Afro basket. That's more recent. I was a journalist. Mm. The best attributes of being a good journalist is to be able to detach yourself from the story. I've never been able to detach myself from that story <laughs> because I'd been close to seeing the pain that basketball has gone through in this country yes. to get to that level. The entire week that I spent in Lugogo, I wish I could rewrite the story. And I remember not only was the song Mulirwana by King Sa one of the biggest songs I, at the time, I, 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 and it played that entire week. It was a good song. I remember at the moment when the national team qualified for the Afro basket, I couldn't help myself. There are times, w and, the best, uh, and as a journalist, the best time to write your story is just after the game has and when the emotions are serious, sit on your laptop mm. and start to script. My hands were shaking. I remember my editor at the time, my Sabeta Sandeva Shaija, just was telling me, um, I hope you're telling us what, what happened, not what you think happened <laughs> at the time. That's how big that moment was, okay. personal. Ado, every single Tuesday night by Luanda, and every time I saw it, by that time I couldn't interpret as much. I was in primary school and just seeing sport on television. Mm. Then the Mwai Grant started to understand, okay, actually the advert for that show had Akibwa, and then the goal that um, Hasule scored yes. in one of the games I think they had gone to play in Saudi Arabia mm. for, for Villa. So those two moments, the very tears. stick close to my heart. John okay. Akibwa and then basketball. All right, there you go. Uh, let me quickly cross to a man who is slightly older than Dakaba, but pretty much the uh, same old group. We are crossing to him again. Uh, Mr. Mark Namanya, his first clip, he was talking about two men. Uh, in this clip now, he talks about two women. And uh, then right after that, I'll be uh, also listening in from Dokas in Zikuru before we read most of the comments online. Mark Namanya. Number one, yep. ourselves. Uh, Dokas Nzikuru, who was Uganda's... All right, welcome back. Uh, that was uh, Mark Namanya talking about uh, the two uh, best sports personality women, that is, that he has uh, watched live. We have some more, and I'm telling you, Andrew, you might need a fire extinguisher because it is a fire on Twitter. Samuel Mayanja says, I didn't see much of the legend Majid Musisi, but according to what I've read about the guy, he sure was the greatest. And then came our very own Dorcas Nzikuru. Kasule Patrick says, Jackson Mayanja, he made playing football so easy. Uh, Ka Kayla Amari says, Dennis Onyango, goalkeeper Mamelodi Sundowns, and number one Uganda Cranes goalkeeper, and she cranes of Uganda hats off. Uh, to these remarkable ladies. And uh, Waluya Lawrence says, uh, Jackson Mayanja, of course, football, and Alan Musoke, rugby. Maybe two more. Jonah Clyde, you say Ibrahim Sekaja, without a shadow of a doubt, he's uh, the biggest guy. Then my guy, Onyango, down in South Africa. We have Rubens uh, Lunyolo, who says, uh, Penina Kabenge. There you have it. Keep them coming. And uh, as we do that, let's link back uh, to Mark Sally and uh, Andrew Mangusha, who are on standby. Mark. Yes, Mark, uh, I can see Mark. Yeah, Andrew Mangusha, I'm right here. Again. Guys, uh, the, let me ask you for your second options. Uh, I do apologize, we're coming too late because we're really uh, running heavy. But let me start off with Mangusha, actually, because I think we just spoke to Mark last. Mangusha, you had given us one. You should give us your second now. Oh, yeah. Uh, hello, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, well, my second comes from golf. Uh, this this boy came as a teenager in 2015, and the golfing legend Deo Akopi said he would be the new face of golf going forward. Uh, a gentleman, a pro golfer from Zambia called uh, Madalisto, said this boy is fearless and has just the perfect attitude to go on and dominate the game. Four years later, five years later, 
it happened just as they said. I'm talking about Ronald Otile, this boy from Torgo Club, currently in North Carolina in the U.S., has taken over the game of golf since he stormed the scene in 2015, winning the Uganda Amateurs, and then participating in the pro as against an amateur on an amateur card and winning, beating Madalisa actually by one stroke. But the and passion in which he did it, he's since gone to win actually two more. So in the last, you know, five years, he's won. In the last five years, he's won three of them. But it's it, it's the class. It's his t shirt. It's his ability to escape from trouble in the bankers. It's his parting ability, but more importantly, it's been his, his, his mind, his mental fortitude, and the fearless manner. And right now, when you talk Ugandan golf, it's got to be uh, Otile, who should be about 22 now, or 23. But it's, it's, it's what the, 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 the superstars, Akopa and Madalisto, said at the time, and what we watched, actually. I covered at least three of the Opens that, that, that he won. But it, it's the very yeah. first. Uh, I had actually started playing golf with Mark Namanya oh, wow. being coached by the then national team coach, Amos Kamia. And that's when we just I just fell in love properly and I decided to cover the Open, and I've never recovered since then. So I follow him all the time. And I can tell you right now, he's still young. And uh, for those who do not watch golf, uh, they just have to keep on the lookout for Otila. Of course, with all due respect to the guy like who is also in the States, uh, you have, of course, Rugumayo, who... who beat him to the title in 2018 uh, and uh, 2017, around there. And then you you, you actually have a, a, a boy who steps onto the, the, the golf course and you see composure, you see posture, and you see authority. And, and this is a boy Absolutely. who knows where, uh, where he is headed. So I'm so happy, one, he comes from our golf club, you'll forgive me on that, but it's the class with which he plays the game and his mental fortitude that I actually pick him out as one of the golfers I've watched. Okay, well, which I really appreciate, man. Uh, your love for golf and promotion of the game as well is duly recognized. Let me quickly cross over to Mark Sally. Mark, Amanyo Gauli Day. Amanya Manji, by legends, Tuina Manji, Mugwanga. You have picked one. I know you're struggling to pick the second, but who is your second option? No, Andrew, I actually named two, actually named Magic Majid, Musi, and uh, Charlie Lurega. If you're oh, asking for Lurega. other options, yeah? Yes, I'm coming to you for an you honorary mention, sorry. Sorry? I'm coming to you for an honorary mention, because you had said you, you, you can't just say two, oh, you would have two more. Oh, oh, honorary mentions, yeah? Like I told you, Andrew, um, unfortunately for me, the best moments that I have from some of the, um, from our sporting heroes are actually on television, and you rolled those out. So you really knocked me out, because um, I've got moments from that, that I wanted to mention from Kiprotish, the gay from Kasim uh, Uma, uh, from uh, John the Beast Mugabe, um, and all those people. But um, uh, the other two guys that, that I, I, I think that I missed out, um, uh, unfortunately, who I'd like to mention, one was Moses Kiptiro. I just told you about me standing at the finish line in uh, Algiers when he crossed the line um, with one shoe and, and won that 5,000 meters gold. He would go on to win uh, the double. At, at the Commonwealth after that. It was just amazing uh, seeing this guy run. And uh, at that moment, I didn't think would get an, a, a track athlete to come and ex, 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 eclipse what he had done. And of course, we know that okay. since then, Kiprotich and Cheptegei have uh, put him quite in the shadow. But also, um, there's a few other sportsmen that would, would uh, have to be mentioned on a show like this uh, before it is out. Um, thankfully, Arnold, I had Arnold mention something about Edwin Eckering. Um, but, uh, so many people might not know about Edwin Eckring and Badminton, but this guy, um, he, rode, he, he rose our flag. Some of, uh, actually, my favorite sporting moments with Ugandans have been near misses. Um, after all sorts of heroics, I watched Edwin Eckering um, set up for bronze uh, playing against um, who was Africa's number one then, a Zambian, at the All-Africa Games in, uh, in Algiers. And it was, it was just an amazing feat, watching him do the things he did. Um, and, and get up to there eventually he would go to become um, Africa's number one at the badminton. Um, some of these uh, sports that don't get um, out of attention in Uganda as opposed to say football or track and boxing have provided such, uh, such moments and um, yeah. 
I want to come back to you very, very shortly. What I want to do is uh, bring some viewers uh, into the show. Let me try and take about four phone calls. Uh, then I'll come back to you guys very shortly, if time does allow. I also want to try and conclude with Ismail Dakaba Chugongo here, the Corporate Affairs Manager at the National Council of Sports. So the number is on your screens, guys. Uh, you've had all these guys, about 12 or 15 uh, guys in the sporting industry, some players, some journalists, uh, giving us their side of the story in terms of uh, the best Ugandan sportsman and sportswoman that they actually have watched live. I don't know. Who have you watched live? Uh, if you're not sending us those messages on NTV Pressbox as the hashtag, uh, call us now. Hello? Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you? I'm fantastic, my friend. What's your name? I'm called Dranga Abi. Tell me. Yeah, I just want to chip in on the uh, running debate. Mm -hmm. uh, my best is uh, coming from football. Okay. And uh, that is the none other than Akim Magumba. Because you've talked about the Mumus, the Mubiros, the Mukasas, the Mukasas, and all those guys. But I'm going for Akim Magumba. Okay. The acceleration, the dribbles, the pace. Amazing, amazing stuff. Ah, yeah, Santi San, Hakim Magumba, popular known as Boda Boda. There you go. Thank you very much, man. We do appreciate uh, Let's try and take two more calls or three more calls. Uh, we are told our phone lines are buzzing. Who else wants to give us a thought? The best sportsman or sportswoman uh, you've watched live uh, anywhere, uh, whether it's in Uganda or outside. Good evening. Hello. Yes, good evening, my friend. What's your name? Hello. I can hear you. Please reduce the volume on uh, your TV set. Hello. Good evening. I'm very good. What's your name? My name is John Selwa. Tell me, my friend, who would you pick? I'm John Selwa, calling from Tinda. Yes, uh, okay, thank you very John much Selwa. for calling us. Calling from Tinda. Yes, I do appreciate that. Tell us the two sportsmen or sportswomen. I'm Majidu Mosi and Ken Bareju, sir. Ah, Ken Bareju, sir. Thank you very much, man. A couple of guys have thrown in Ken Bariyajusa, and I don't think he gets enough mentions as he probably uh, deserves. Yeah, um, I think when you're supposed to be hitting these six, that's when you start exercising all those kind of things. Mm. Indeed, I think for some of those who went Sprite basketball, schools basketball is the biggest thing. He was probably the best player to emerge out of that. Then when he came into the league, um, in the mid-2000s in the mid there, mm. um, he did a lot of great stuff. Uh, he, sh he should have done a bit more. Yeah. Uh, maybe his body just let him down a yeah, bit. Let's, let's get some more phone calls here. Good evening and welcome to uh, the press box. Uh, hello. Yes, my friend, what's your name? Yeah, um, Nasa. Tell me. Yeah, no, uh, I'll, I'll go to the side of football. Mm -hmm. I'll start with Augustine Zumba. I'll stick to Augustine Zumba because I, I watched him when I was a young boy. Yes. Now, second, I'll go to King David Obua. Okay. Yeah, now, but uh, Andrew, this question, uh, it was too broad because it, it has the likes of the legendary Lumansi and Maxi. They have a lot of history. We understand at least you just said in the last 10 years or 20. Thank you. <laughs> I know. I, I do appreciate that. But don't worry, my friend. It's the press box. So we shall bring Lumanzi back. We shall bring uh, Max Ali back. All these guys will come and give us their thoughts. Uh, do we have one or two more callers for the evening to wrap this one up? Good evening and welcome to the press box. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, Andrew. This is Mansur from Aru. Ah, How is Arua, my friend? Thank you for joining us. Aru is cool. Aru is very good. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah, I think for me, I will go for I will go for Oboa and uh, Aruna. Aruna Mao. Aruna. Aruna Mao. Aruna, Aruna Mao. Mao. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yes. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. One, you can see, uh, I think Oboa and Aruna Mao. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you very much, my brother. Our part of the KC yeah. team that won the league in 1997, now involved with the politics, yes. is one of those who would love to see Magogo gone yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite an interesting guy. <laughs> Let's take one final caller for the evening, man. So many comments are coming in online. Uh, good evening and welcome to the press box. Hello. Ah, guys, we have so many phone callers. Uh, you can't call us and keep quiet. Good evening. Hello. Yes, my Hello? friend, what's your name? I'm a Kituna State calling in from Akiso. Tell me. Kituna State calling in from Akiso. Okay, tell me the two names of uh, the sportsmen or sportswomen. I think I'm now going for Joshua Kiptegei. Mm -hmm. 
I'll go for Joshua Kipsegi and maybe Obua, Dennis Obua. Okay, okay, okay. Nice, I've been told there are more phone calls. You know what, Dakaba, let's take one more. Just, j just one more. For the sake of the road, because I mean it's the press box, just one more. Uh, the hashtag is NTV Press Box. You can join us uh, with your Hello. of the story. Good evening. Good evening, Andrew. I'm very good, my brother. What's your name? Uh, first of all, congratulations to you. This has been your best year. Asante sana. Uh, I have two options. One was in 22, Stephen Kipertich, but I've never seen Uganda. First of all, the first hour, the first, all of them did take a Uganda and win. The two was the last 30 minutes, people began congesting, like in those videos and what. So that's when they believed that, oh, actually, Uganda can win. Yes. Then the other guy is a rugby player. He's uh, a man of from the Miyango. He's called Justin Chimono. Man, yeah. that guy was too good. He was too good. Actually, people people think Wokorashi is good, but Chimono used to pocket Wokorashi in school games. <laughs> Because yeah. Wukulash was in Hana, and he was nowhere compared to Chimono. So, I think Chimono is one of the best I've seen in rugby. Thank you. Hi, Asante Sana. I, I, I love that title, did it because I've, um, I've, been, I've been very lucky as a person. Mm. I've watched both, I, I'd call them kids, they are like my younger brothers, Justin and Philip. Okay. I've watched them start uh, from uh, Oliver. I actually first watched uh, Philip when he was in senior three. Mm -hmm. at uh, Hana Mixed School and they won an independence tournament where he was just dancing through Kakamega uh, High School at Chadondo, one of those tournaments where they had come down. Then I saw Justin play for Uganda in the old Bambuli Rugby Super Series, which I thought we should have won. I didn't make just one critical decision in a game I was, I was watching in Nairobi. Again, it's one of the, the, uh, the teams there. I think it was called Ryan was playing for a franchise called Victoria. Mm. And he went on and did great things, knocked out someone when he played Zimbabwe at Chadondo. So I, it's, it's a healthy debate. But for me, normally in these debates, I love the fact that everyone has to make a personal choice. Yes. And for me, it's down to preference yeah. in the end. Uh, guys, I mean, we've got to end the show now, guys, because it, we've run out of time. We must appreciate everyone who has joined us. But the discussion does continue online. Uh, the hashtag is still NTV Press Box. Daka, I'm going to give you one final chance, mm. just in case you think one or two names should be dropped in this basket. You must not explain why. You can just pick them off mind because I have about 15 seconds to wrap this. An honorary mention? Um, ones we've watched yes, one in we've watched. the present. Um, I've got to say Edgar Watson. Um, I've got to say David Obua. Mm -hmm. Then let me use my final seconds um, of the show. I'm trying to think about another one. Kasim Ouma in there. Um, is another one that I thought has done, did himself great in the ring, may not have done himself outside the ring. But I want to take my final seconds, a lot of people buzzing on my phone to send them greetings. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> everyone watching the show, I'm glad someone has actually sent me a message and said, it's long since I last saw you on TV. Yeah, yeah I'm glad I'm here. I'm, okay. uh, it's, it's something I've not done a lot, but for everyone, you're all great. Everyone yeah. who's watched and sent me a message and said they're watching, I'm glad. Uh, thank you for watching. I send you greetings. Okay. Dearly. <laughs> Okay, there you go. Asante sana. Let me also two mid -day. Yeah, two mid -day. Yeah. let me also say a big thank you uh, to Max Ali and of course Andrew Mangusha. Guys, again, I must apologize. Uh, in these COVID times, we never have enough time. Uh, th that, that, that is all we had time for today. We, we've suddenly taken your thoughts, but I'm going to create more time for you guys uh, next week on the show so we can have this debate slightly longer. So thank you very much to Max Ali and thank you very much to Andrew Mangusha as well. Thank you very much to Ismail Jakaba Chigongo. Thank you very much always for making time and coming to the press box. Thank all you. the guests that have joined us on the show tonight, the entire production team just behind the scenes, Sean Stewart uh, uh, and your team as well. Thank you very much as well for doing a fantastic job. My final two cents on the show tonight, stay home and stay safe. Good night.